Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. When Larry from Deep South Texas challenged me to make American cheese, I was a bit skeptical because I suppose not skeptical, skeptical is not the word, um, cautious, I suppose, because I had said in many of my uh, Ask the Cheese Man live sessions that I would never make American cheese. So here we are. This video is going to be about how to make American cheese. However, one caveat, it had one ingredient that was foreign to the cheese making process, uh, and that is sodium citrate. Now sodium citrate is a simple uh, salt uh, that is easily made at home. And in fact, I made sodium citrate myself using sodium bicarbonate and citric acid. And it's a very simple process you go through to make the sodium citrate powder. Anyway, I thought because I love, I have a love of chemistry as well, that uh, I'd take up Larry's challenge. So let's see what Larry had to say about me and never making processed cheese. I started watching Gavin Weber's YouTube channel about six years ago, and he inspired me to make my own cheese. And I've been making cheese uh, for the last six years, and always trying to come up with a cheese that will melt well. So one of the first things I do with every cheese when it's ready is make a grilled cheese sandwich to see how it melts. Some of them don't melt at all, some of them get a little bit soft, and some of them melt a little bit around the edges. So I haven't really achieved my goal of, uh, of making a cheese that melts well. So I'm going to try making my own American cheese. Well, let's see what my number one cheese making mentor has to say about it. If it doesn't taste like cheese and pretends to be cheese, that is terrible for me as well. So many processed cheeses, I think are disgusting because they they have far too many additives. They don't have enough cheese and they're not made in the traditional manner. I'm a bit of a purist as far as making cheese go. Well, Gavin doesn't have a good opinion about processed cheese, but without it, how are you going to make that melty grilled cheese sandwich or that classic American cheeseburger? Nothing else melts like American cheese. But then, as I was watching one of Gavin's live streams, I heard something that just knocked me off my feet. Let's take a look at that. However, I have found a recipe on how to make American cheese. Uh, so those people who have been asking me, all those heathens, have been asking me to make American cheese, which is a processed cheese, I have found a recipe, and I'm thinking of doing it. I don't know, should I? Um, maybe. So did you see that? Not only is Gavin thinking about making American cheese, he actually wrote it down on his cheeses to make list. Well, we all know that just because Gavin writes a cheese down doesn't mean we're going to see it in the near future. But if you're watching this video, that means he gave it a go. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Back to you, Gav. So thanks for that, Larry. Um, yes, I had said all those things, and yes, I stand by them. But as I said, the only thing that's foreign to this cheese making process or to make processed cheese or American cheese is a sodium citrate. So I am using two of my own creations, uh, my Cheshire or Cheshire, and I used Blue Gouda um, for my cheese. So let's go and check out how I made American cheese. So the rest of the video will be in two parts. The first part will be how to make sodium citrate, but you can buy that in specialty stores. So you can skip ahead if you want to, to the cheese making part. Uh, I'll put the timestamps below. Now the first ingredient we're making, we're using or measuring out is just water. I'm using pure water, 125 grams. 
Next ingredient I'm measuring out there is sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda. So we're going to be measuring out 97 grams of bicarb. I'm so close. So these measurements are going to be fairly exact. Uh, and it's not, that's the reason I'm not doing them in pounds and ounces. Ounces is because I don't know how to convert them like that. Anyway, so the next ingredient is citric acid. And we need 74 grams of citric acid. So this is anhydrous citric acid. So it dissolves in water. Uh, most of the citric acids you get in the store are anhydrous. So there we go. So the ingredients have to be exactly measured out for the chemical reaction to work properly. So we put our citric acid into the uh, into a saucepan. This is a two litre saucepan. We add in our water, 125 millilitres, or 125 grams, which is exactly the same. And we give that a good stir to make sure that the citric acid is fully dissolved in, that, in the water, so you can't see any of the crystals uh, remaining behind. So, that didn't take very long at all. And now we're going to pour in the bicarb soda or sodium bicarbonate. Now, technically, what we're making... Oh, look at that fizz. <laughs> there is a big reaction there. I had to keep stirring very fast to stop it from uh, going over the, the side of the pan. So just keep stirring after you put that in. As you can see there, it's uh, lessened a little bit. The reaction does take quite some time. Now, technically, we're making trisodium citrate. Uh, that's the proper technical uh, chemical term for what we're trying to make. There we go. Now, it has settled down a fair bit. You can see there that it's still bubbling. It's still releasing carbon dioxide. And that's exactly what we want it to do. We want the complete reaction of the acid and the base to finish. Now, it starts to go clear. That just means some of the bicarb has settled on the bottom. So you need to stir it a bit more so that the reaction continues and you get rid of all of that carbon dioxide um, out of the, the solution. So you can see it goes fairly clear, just giving it a final stir there with a spatula, just to make sure there's no powders on the bottom. And I've done that there. So that's as clear as it's gonna get there's no more CO2 being released. It stopped fizzing. And I've just about to turn the heat on where I have there. So once all the CO2 bubbles are finished, you turn the heat on just to a simmer. And we're just going to boil the water off. So the remaining powder uh, or crystals that are left behind is the trisodium citrate, sodium citrate. As you can see there, it gets a bit of a crust just give it a bit of a swirl. Now, it took me about two hours to make this. The biggest part of the reaction was when we added the bicarb and the citric acid together. That's what took the longest. This boiling off part took about 30 minutes tops. Um, so th this was the fairly easy part. So I'm just stirring it just to make sure that uh, it crystallizes properly. which it does fairly fast. Once most of the water's gone, you can see it starts to form a paste. Uh, and that paste is the, uh, the sodium citrate. So I'm just spreading that over the bottom of the pan. It's on a very low heat at the moment, just to make that dry out. And it does. And then and when I got to this stage, I just spread it out on the bottom and turned the heat off. Gave it a quick taste. It tasted just slightly salty sour. And then after a little bit more time, 
it uh, it turned into a, a powder that was uh, had no water in it whatsoever. So I just poured it into a little container, and there's my sodium citrate. Easy peasy. So all you have to do is pop a lid on, airtight container, and that will stay like that for ages. So onto the cheese part, making the American cheese. I've got a big block of blue gouda. You can use any uh, uh, any melty sort of cheese. So this is uh, a big block. Let me see. I think I've took measurements. Yes, it's uh, 288 grams of the blue gouda. And then I also grated 113 grams of Cheshire. So the total amount of cheese you need is 400 grams. So that's all grated. You don't have to mix it or anything like that. I'm just doing that to show you how finely grated it is. So 400 grams of cheese. So we've got another half cup of water. We just pour that into our saucepan. We add our sodium citrate to the water and we mix that so it becomes dissolved. In a second, let me turn the heat on first. There we go. Just on a very low heat. So we just dissolve that just by whisking. Doesn't take very long, took about a minute. And then we start putting our handfuls of cheese in. Now the Cheshire cheese, as I mentioned, it was very crumbly. Um, it uh, wouldn't melt so uh, in previous experiments so hopefully this will work here this will be good now i noticed the color was a bit off because the cheshire was very white uh, so i decided at this stage to put in two drops of anato just two drops there we go and that gave it a little bit more color a little bit more uh, a color that uh, resembles american cheese or for me craft singles so you just keep stirring until it's smooth and oozy which is absolutely perfect now you could lessen the water a little bit uh, i used a 25 percent water to the amount of cheese that i had and that gave it a good um, consistency so you can actually pour this on nachos right now if you wanted to it will be absolutely perfect I chose to put it into molds, as you can see there, just to uh, give it some form. Now this is a rectangle six cavity food grade mold. So I managed to get uh, five good sized cheeses out of it. Now, from here on, I popped it into the fridge, just normal kitchen fridge, for one hour just to firm up. You can leave it longer, it doesn't firm up anymore. Uh, it just goes solid enough that you can use it. So what does it smell like? Well, it should smell like the resultant state of the two cheeses that I used, the Blue Gouda and the Cheshire. Now, the Blue Gouda, as you may have seen, uh, shredded or, or grated very easily. However, the Cheshire was really, really crumbly and it wouldn't have melted for love nor money. So to get it into this emulsion state is quite remarkable. The sodium citrate really does act as a very good emulsifier, which prevents the cheese when it melts from splitting into uh, the the oil that you'll see in oil and then the milk solids um, if you melt cheese normally um, anyway so let's turn one out and, and see what it looks like shall we so popping it out of the mold it seems to come out of its form okay let's have a look do we have a complete rectangle of cheese and we do look at that let's pop that aside one <laughs> block of processed cheese Let's just have a taste it shouldn't taste too much different than the other one the, the ones that I made it's yeah not crumbly it feels like a craft single <laughs> it's definitely processed cheese all right so let's have a taste uh, I didn't add any salt to it um, during the process however the recipe I was using said you could add salt if you wanted to may have noticed that I put my finger into the molten cheese uh, ooze 
and tasted it and it was fairly salty already. <laughs> it's really remarkable. That tastes exactly like processed cheese. Or what we call it over here. You can taste a little bit of the blue from the gouda, the blue gouda that I made, but seems to have gone mostly. Definitely. That is so much like craft processed cheddar cheese from when I was a child. It is just, it's taken me right back. Uh, crazy. Don't get me wrong, it's quite nice, very strong in flavour. Because the, um, the blue gouda was um, uh, made in October 2018, so it's a fairly mature cheese, and the Cheshire wasn't too far after that. So these are fairly mature cheeses that are basically being emulsified, so they do taste very nice. They're not bad. It's just cheese melted down and, and returned back to its solid state without the crumbliness. Really, really nice. I'll probably do this again, actually. If I had a cheese like, ooh, uh, triple pepper jack, which has turned so crumbly now as it's aged, to get it into some sort of melty state that would be really good for say burgers or grilled cheese sandwiches then i could probably take it through this process i certainly made enough uh, sodium citrate quite nice quite nice the sodium citrate had a slight saltiness to it being a salt a sodium salt so i didn't really need to add any um of the of extra table salt or cheese salt. I definitely had to add the natto because the Cheshire that I had uh, was really white and the Gouda, I don't think I added any uh, colorant or anything to that. So to get it to the state where it kind of looks like a yellow slab of processed cheese, I had to add those two drops of natto. So just be aware you'll turn out with a lot whiter cheese if you don't add that natto. So let's see how this goes in a grilled cheese sandwich, shall we? So, is American cheese melty? Well, from what I've seen, yes, it is. And as if by magic, Kim has made me this lovely toasted sandwich. Not a grilled cheese sandwich, but a toasted sandwich. I'm gonna see how melty this is. You would get some indication though, of course, because I had to melt the cheese to put it into the mold to start with, so yes, I think it's going to be melty. But let's have a look. So there's our, oh, oozy cheese, look at that. And Kim's put some red onion in the cheese sandwich, so let's have a taste. Mmm. Oh, that is lovely. Mmm. Perfect melty cheese. Mmm. Not the natural way, but it'll do. Mmm. Beautiful taste to it too. Mmm. Well, that'll do curd nerds. As you've seen, that's how you make American cheese. Beautiful toasted sandwich to go with it afterwards. Um, but I'll wrap that up in cling wrap and pop that in the fridge. And we'll eat that over the next few months. Um, I think it'll be stay uh, preserved. It won't age uh, due to the sodium citrate, um, but it will stay the same, exactly the same um, as it is right now. A good cheese, good experiment. I did enjoy it. And a great way to reprocess cheese if it's crumbly and not to the texture that you want it to, and you want that flavor of the cheese you've created, but you want to be able to melt it. So try some sodium citrate. It's harmless stuff. Um, it's in so many products that you don't even know. Check it out on Wikipedia. Well, thank you for watching Curd Nerds, and we'll see you next time.